All right. Good evening, gentlemen. Again, uh, I miss you guys last week tremendously, but it is definitely good to be amongst the brethren again, man. And you know that I'm just always excited. I can't get enough of this. So I'm back again, man. And again, uh, uh, I lean and depend on you guys. I thank you for all your prayers, your words of encouragement, just being, just even thinking about me and my family. Uh, and so on that note, we're going to get our devotion started and believe it in the hands of Brother Othello. Good evening, brothers. Good evening. Sure. How are you? Uh, greet you in the name of our Christ. It's very nice to see everyone. It's uh, the Lord's mercies. We're not consumed. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness towards each and one of every one of us. Amen. Amen. As we begin our devotion, I'm going to start doing like uh, Brother Willis. He doesn't ask. He kindly suggests brothers to participate. And the only way we're going to get to know each other is what? By participation. So this evening, you uh, all will be graced with our great brother, Anthony Hawkins, to bring our scripture. And I would ask Reverend Caleb, would you mind bringing our prayer? Thanks. Brother Hawkins, you have the floor. You're on mute. Uh -huh. It's a habit, not a problem. Brother, I'm reading for the scripture tonight. We're going to be Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 11. Following, following my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. May God have the best of hearers and doers of his holy word. Amen. Shall we pray, brothers? Father, we come this evening to, uh, first of all, just to say thank you for allowing us to, to see another day. God, we thank you for watching over us and keeping us as we went our separate ways throughout the day. Thank you for a safe passage to and from, from work or from whatever destination that we, we've traveled today. And God, we come asking that you would right now Look down upon each and every one of us, God. We all stand in need of, of something. God, there's some area of need in our lives. So, God, we pray that you would bless us according to your will. And, God, we, we ask that you would forgive us because we know we've sinned some way, some shape, some form throughout this day. God, we ask that you would continue to bless and keep us all. And, God, we ask that you watch over those who are uh, leading us. We always, uh, as always, God, we ask for blessings upon Pastor Anderson, and we ask God that you continue to watch over and keep Pastor Washington, all of the leadership of Lily Grove, and, and watch over and keep the, all the men who are present here today. God, we pray that we will be open and honest as we, as we seek understanding uh, through your word and through the teaching of your word. God, we pray for each and every one, each and every voice that's going to be heard tonight. We ask God that whatever is said, that it might carry weight, that it might be meaningful. And God, we pray your blessings on us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for that. Getting us started, Brother O'Neill, <laughs> Brother Hawkins, and Brother, uh, who was that third guy? Brother Caleb. Brother Caleb, thank you so much, guys. We are so delighted for you guys to be on this call tonight. This is another edition of the Kingdom Men Academy Monday night meeting. My name is Brother Philip Ware, and I'm with Brother uh, Willis Robinson and Darren O'Neill uh, tonight, and we're going to bring uh, another inviting meeting talking about the uh, aspects of what it is to be a kingdom man. Uh, Reverend Washington is here tonight. Thank you, Reverend Washington, for being here, getting us started on tonight. And I also wanted to kind of just um, have a couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, I have Eugene Smith, you sent out a text today sharing with us the um, Youth Department Black History Program. You want to enlighten us on that, how guys can join in on that? Sure. Uh, the the, the uh, Youth Department had a video premiering at 6, six o'clock today. In fact, it's still going on my other device. But you can actually uh, go back to Lily Grove uh, YouTube channel and replay it um, It's the youth black history uh, program uh, for for black history. Uh, they did an excellent job of, you know, of uh, uh, putting everyone together. Uh, they did songs, 
couple of speeches. I even had one uh, little um, kid to, to interview Dr. Adams. I thought it was really great, uh, little brother Hawks. So if you get a chance, go to the YouTube page or to the Facebook page and just, just replay it. Thank you, Brother Eugene. We want to support our youth in any way we can, man. And anything they're doing, man, we want to encourage them and uh, support them. That's what we want to do. Uh, Absolutely. We have um, Brother Rick Bowser and Brother O'Neill. Both of you guys have something that y'all want to share. Y'all want to invite the guys to kind of participate in some kind of distribution. Would you guys mind sharing with us what, what that's all about? Brother, where I, I started off uh, coming from the kingdom, me and Connor, the Marriage 360 Ministry and the Kingdom Men's Academy are co-partnering to give out gift packages to the homeless. Now we need about 10 brothers, 10 kingdom men to volunteer to accomplish this goal. And we wanna do it on this week and the target day is Wednesday, but we can do it any day this week whenever the 10 brothers are available. Okay, this is Brother Lewis, I'm available Wednesday. I don't have school. So. Amen. Okay. Brother okay, Elijah, what, what would they have to do if they want to volunteer? We we would basically uh, get in three, four cars and just kind of go to the homeless. And, and, and most of these guys are targeted under bridges or at, at stop signs, you know, like Scott and 610. Uh -huh. we, we just target the homeless. So we'll get together, two, three cars, and it's only 65 gift packages. So uh, 10 okay. brothers, that'll be about six gift packages apiece. But if you would want to get involved, if you can call me, uh, I'll give you my cell phone number and I'll be through. My number is 281-734-2032. Again, 20 what? 32. 2032. 281-734-2032. Okay. And brothers, you. you can also brothers, you can also inbox me uh, in the Zoom, the chat. Just send me your number, and I'll in case everybody calls at the same time, I'll forward the information over to Brother Biser. Thank you, Brother Biser. Thank you so much, Brother Biser. Uh, yes, me. sir. What what time are we looking at doing this? Well, we we would get together when you call me, whatever time is available for all of us. So we're gonna we're gonna arrange yeah. around your. Taylor made it around your time. It, it'll be around your time. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, uh, bringing us up to speed to all the things that's going on. I believe that if anything that's going on, we need the men. The men, everything starts with the men. Everything starts with the men. If anything's going on that's that's adding that mean anything, the men ought to be involved in it. So, guys, uh, that's why we had these guys uh, sharing with you these opportunities to uh, volunteer, to serve, uh, start with us, guy. Uh, have you ever, I, I was in a, a ministry one time and I sit in the ministry, I was about to join that ministry and I asked the leader of that ministry, I said, sir, can you give me an idea of what the ministry is all about? And when I asked him that question, all I got was crickets. That's all I got. The leader didn't have an idea of what their mission was. And if the leader doesn't know what his mission is, no. then everybody who's following him is lost. <laughs> it's like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> Needless to say, I hurry up and got out of there because I don't want to be following nobody who doesn't know where they're going. Mm -hmm. Because if he's lost, then I'm lost too. Mm -hmm. One of the things we want to do in this ministry, brothers, is kind of give you an idea so that you will understand what we're all about, who, what we're doing, and what our goals are. We are kingdom men who assemble every Monday evening to encourage Christian brothers to become spiritually and physically fit, morally conscious, and biblically sound. That is who we are, and that's what we do. As a kingdom man, I acknowledge my position in Christ, I acknowledge my place in my home, my potential for service in my church, and my purpose in the world. A man who doesn't know what his mission is, is lost. You know, there's one thing about Jesus. He knew who he was, and he knew what his mission was. Jesus said, I didn't, came, I didn't come to be served. I come to serve. I come to lay down my life and give it as a ransom for many. 
I come Amen. not to do my will, but do the will of the Father. Jesus knew not only who he was, but he knew what his mission is, guys. So I don't want none of us to be lost. I don't want nobody guessing about what we're going to do on Monday nights or what our objective is this whole year. We want to encourage you guys to be everything that you can be. We want to raise up the, the standard of leadership in our home, in our church, and in our community, guys. We want to make you great. Now, guys, listen. Uh, the world is looking for leaders. If you look around the world, man, everybody, you see so many people, so many refugees running away from their countries. And what they're actually running away from is bad leadership. People in Mexico packing up all their stuff, traveling down the road, swimming across the Rio Grande. What they're doing, they're, they're, they're leaving bad leadership and trying to find some good leadership. People in Haiti taking, taking a, a hold to a raft swimming across the, uh, the Caribbean, trying to get out of bad leadership. They don't care where they're going. They trying to get out of bad leadership. People in Afghanistan hanging on a wheel well of an aircraft, of a, of, of a military cargo plane, trying to get away from bad leadership. Guys, the world is looking for true leadership, man. And guys, what we want to do is build you guys up to be true leaders. Anybody can be a leader, but everybody can't be a true leader. What we want to do is make you a true leader. Now, guys, I don't know if you knew or not, but this week, now last week, we had a chance to see it and a good example of what true leadership is about. I'm talking about that president over there in Ukraine. If you, if you guys been keeping up with that, this guy was an epitome of what true leadership is. Reverend Allison shared with us some of the things he did yesterday, yeah, on yesterday. He shared with us on the, from the pulpit. He said that President Biden asked that man to, if you really want to go get out of this place, we will give you a safe passage. And that leader, listen to what this leader said. That leader said, we don't want no safe passage. Give me some ammunition so we can fight. Uh, he said that, that Russia is not going to see our spine. They're going to see our face. He said, we're going to stand here and fight for our country. Now, guys, you got to love that. That's mm -hmm. what true leadership is all about. It's about standing for something, man, and not falling for anything, man. The Bible said that the Bible said that a true leader, the good shepherd, lays his life down for the sheep. A bad shepherd, he flees when trouble comes and leads the sheep to fight for themselves. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of Donald Trump. When mm -hmm. Donald Trump was sitting up that... Uh, uh, that uh, um, that ride over that uh, at the White House. <laughs> he said, "We're going to walk down the street." And everybody took out walking, but he said he stayed back and watched it on TV. <laughs> you want to see what true leadership and bad leadership All is? Right. That's a good example right there, man. <laughs> now, for you guys who've been here for a little while, y'all heard me talk about that line. Okay, mm -hmm. the line has some of the attributes of our creator. Okay. Y'all know the line is the king of the jungle. That's his title. He's the king of the jungle. But he's not the biggest animal in the jungle. He's not the strongest. He's not the most intelligent animal in the jungle. But yet, he's the leader. What makes the lion the king of the jungle when he don't when he have all these limitations, guys? What makes him the king? That's right. His attitude. The way he thinks about himself. You see, a lion is very courageous, man. He's not a coward. He's brave and he's courageous, man. And that's exactly what that president over there in Ukraine represents. He represents a man who stands up for, for courage, man. And the people that he's leading, they're following him. They are motivated. They're going to follow him all the way to the death, man, because he stands up for great leadership, guys. One, um, one other thing, guys. Now, if you want to see an example of poor leadership, all you have to do is look at Vladimir Putin. Okay, one of the one of the what, what one thing I found about Putin, Putin is not does not answer to anybody. He's his own boss. Okay, he listens to himself. He's of his own counsel. He's not under nobody's authority. He does what he wants to. People were saying, well, who is he listening to? Who is he counseling with? The problem is he's not counseling with nobody, guys. And one of the things, guys, 
If you want to find out what a dangerous leader is, ask him, who is he following? A lot of people say, man, I'm the minister of this. I'm, I'm the leader of this. And I ask him, I say, well, who, you, who authority are you, are you under? Who, who, who's, who's under you, man? Who, who are you under? And they say, well, I'm not under nobody. Well, I, that tells me right then that you're not a true leader. Every true leader is under somebody's authority. Even Jesus. Jesus said, I don't do what I want to do. I do what the, I only do what the, my father tells me to do. Do you know he was under John's authority for a while before he started his ministry? He places himself under authority. Now, guys, this is one thing that blew me away, man. When we started this new transition of leadership here in the Kingdom Men Academy, Reverend Washington came up to me and said, Brother Well, it's in your hands. I am now under your leadership. Man, that, that, that blew me away right there. I really didn't know how to respond to that. But guys, that's what a true leader does. He puts himself under somebody else's authority, man. Amen. If, you want, if you want to find a dangerous leader, ask him who authority he's under. Who the, it doesn't answer to nobody. He's above reproach, man. And that's one of the things that really Robson shared with us on last week, man. He said that you have to be accountable to somebody. You have to give somebody permission to check you when you come out of line, man. That's what he said last week, man. And I thought that was the epitome of what a leader should do. Who, who have you given permission to check you when you get out of line? We all need to be accountable to somebody. And brother, and one of the things that I heard uh, our pastor say, he said, um, I'm a leader to whoever allows me to lead them. Mm -hmm. And what that means, what, what I got from that is that everybody's not letting the, power, the pastor lead them. And that's quite all right. He said, well, whoever's letting me to lead them, that's who I'm leading, man. And every last one of us ought to be under his leadership, guys. Mm -hmm. if, I, if somebody asks you, say, whose leadership you under? You ought to say the pastor of this church. Mm -hmm. Every one of us ought to be under some leadership. So I really want to uh, commend Brother um, Willis Robson, because that's what I got out of that, that lesson last week, man. Who have you given permission to hold you accountable for your actions? You ought right. to be accountable to somebody, man. You, you're not no long ranger, man. You don't do what you want to do. You only do what the master tells you, guys. Mm -hmm. Freelance Robinson, what you got for this evening, man? Break us out something, man. Good evening, brothers. Hey, Thank man. you, Brother Ware. Yeah. I would say to you that I'm excited about coming before you again tonight, but that wouldn't be the truth. I'm more nervous than anything else. Hey, that's a good feeling. <laughs> I'm I'm very much aware that last week I went a little over. A couple of brothers kind of reminded me that I went a little over. So I'm going to guarantee you tonight that I'm going to give you some time back tonight. But tonight we're going to talk about being biblically sound. Yeah. Part of all that Brother Ware has been talking about now for since he's been in the leadership position. And he, along with the rest of us, believe that all of us ought to be biblically sound in doctrine. So the question is, what is doctrine? What is doctrine? In its basic sense, doctrine is any sort of teaching. The Bible, for example, talks about teaching of men. Go to Mark 7, 7 through 8, and you see that. The teaching of demons, 1 Timothy 4 and 1, and Revelation 2 and 24, and the teachings of God, John 6, 45, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 9, and 1 John 2 and 27. Here, we are concerned with divine teaching, the teaching of God. According to one definition, doctrine is teaching from God, about God, that directs us to the glory of God. This definition provides a helpful structure of sound doctrine, identifying doctrine's source, object, and ultimate end. But tonight I want to talk about five grave consequences of misapplying scripture. Five grave consequences of misapplying scripture. The first one is limited or incomplete view of God. The second one is exalted view of self. 
The third one is surface level understanding of scripture. The fourth one is the risk of theological error. And the four, fifth and final one is missing out on the full meaning of God's word. So let's get started with the first one. Limited or complete view of God. When when we pick verses out of the con, out, we pick verses and we take them out of context in which the author or the, the writers, the, the, the apostles or whoever the, the prophets wrote them, we're not just mishandling scripture from a literary literary standpoint. We're changing how we interpret God in his own word. Let me say that again. When we pick verses out of context in which the author wrote them, we're not just mishandling scripture from a literal standpoint. We're changing how we interpret God in his word. The authors God inspired to write the Bible intentionally phrased their work in specific ways. Like to write the Bible intentionally phrased, like writing, like any writer, they would build the narrative thought upon thought, purposely arranging the account to send a message about who God is, who God was, and what God will be. When we take verses out of the story, like Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, we miss out on the true meaning of those verses. We might be getting some partial truth. Let, let me say that we might be getting some partial truth from the outer context of the version, but it's not the whole truth. And anytime it's not the whole truth is what? A lie. It's a whole lie. We're missing the big theological concept that teaches us the most about God. When people do this repeatedly with the word, they end up with a limited, mm -hmm. incomplete view of God himself. When you take scripture out of context, when you, when you add to or take away, you end up with a limited, incomplete view of God himself. This is how believers end up looking to God as a cosmic vending machine or a wow factor. Uh, he's untouchable. He's, he's super going to come down and do supernatural things and, and that kind of, or oh, it's prosperity theological. Or as all love and no justice. You, you remember the story uh, of, of, uh, of, of Job where, where God was uh, upset with his friends. God loved Job, y'all. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been invited Satan to, to get after him. So God doesn't always do things where we are always happy. We don't always understand what God is doing. So we have to understand when we're live, dealing with scripture, we have to understand that God is love and justice at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so we can't take a scripture and fit it to fit our situations because the Bible is not designed to fit our situations. Am I saying anything? Am I making sense here? Mm -hmm. The Bible is, is not designed to fit what goes on in our life today, so to speak. The Bible is written for a specific purpose. Right. And the, the, in, 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 the, the inspired writers wrote it based on a full story, not part of the story. So we got to be, we gotta be really careful how we deal with scripture because people follow us. People listen to us. And when they listen to us, they think we got it right. And they take what you say and they take it out and then they give it to someone else. And then they give it to someone else. And before you know it, it's all wrong all over the place. And it's hard to change. Number two, exalted view of self. Now we all may have some of some of this uh, of 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 of, of, uh, of ourselves because we are human beings. We all men, and every now and then we want to be, you know, the big pie in the sky and that kind of thing. But the second consequence of misapplying scripture 
is a lofty view of self. Mm. Are there any people on this line like that today? Every now and then, you understand what I'm saying? This is the natural outcome when we start with an incomplete view of God. Because any view of God that isn't complete naturally tends to glorify who? Self. Humans. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, if it's not of God, it's about me. It's either me of God, me or God. Sometimes we, we feel like we're God in certain situations, don't we? People today want to feel good about themselves because the Bible talks so much about God's love for humanity. It's quite easy to proof text scripture to accomplish this, to make it fit around you, to feel good about you. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't fear no, no man. We have to read the whole story. Right. All you have to do <coughs> is quote verse about God's love, peace, and joy. Now, guess what? There's a war going on over there, right? Between the Russian and who? Ukrainian. 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 Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now, now, what do you what do you think is is is, is happening? Where, is there no love over there? You think God is not aware of what's going on over there? Yeah. God's love still exists. There is no peace right now. There's not much joy, but God is still in charge. All these things are part of following Jesus. But there is so much more to every story in the Bible. We have to read the whole story. Now, if this is all we know, about Christianity, we're going to be shocked to discover that there are going to be trials, pain, mm -hmm. persecution, mm -hmm. trials of life, right? Pains of life. Persecution when your friends turn their backs on you. When you have a stroke that you didn't expect to happen. When people die that's close to you, how are you going to handle that? If God is, all we see is love and, and, and joy, what about these things that's going to happen to you as a Christian? They are bound to happen. We need to understand that Christianity, being a Christian, you have promised to have these things. We are promised. We're going to have trials and tribulations. That's a promise. For those who follow Christ, it's promised to you. You'll also struggle to, sub to submit to the individuality of Christ because Christ is my Savior. I don't know how you receive him, but he deals with me on an individual level. He doesn't deal with us in group settings. He deals with me on an individual level. He knows who I am, and I need to know who he is because the Bible you were taught evolves around you will cause you some issues in interpreting the Bible when you fall on these hard times. If you read a book or attend a study where scripture is constantly used to focus on yourself, that's the first clue that something is wrong. The Bible should continually redirect our attention to who God is, what Jesus has done, and how the spirit is working in this world. If you're not coming away with a greater view of God, you're not asking the right questions in your Bible study, i.e. your Sunday school, your Deacon Family Ministry teachings, your Bible training classes, and etc. Simply put, the Bible is not about us. It's about the Lord. And we have a tendency to make the Bible strictly about us. And brothers, we have to change that narrative in terms of studying the Bible. There's got to be a way to study the whole Bible and get it to fit, get us to fit into what the scriptures are saying to us. And number three, 
Brother Robinson. Surface. Yes, sir. Before you go forward, I, I just want to highlight what you said. Um, and, and that's a part of our uh, mission, gentlemen. And I, I certainly appreciate what Deacon Robinson is, is highlighting because he says we've got to be biblically sound. I, I think I've never done any carpentry work, but they call it a plumb line. That that if that, uh, 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 what do you call it? The first stone that they put down is the cornerstone. If, if it's lined up wrong, everything else will line up right, wrong, right behind it. Yes, sir. And, and, and what we see overseas, for example, is absolute patriotism. You're seeing some serious self-love. You're seeing a love for Russia and love for that leadership to the point that if he says we got to go fight, we got to go fight. And, and in Ukraine, uh, uh, hey, rather than us just let them have it because these people are maniacs, stay and fight. So you see the love of self there, but the self love, like, like Whitney Houston said, the greatest love of all is learning to love yourself. That's a misnomer. That's, that's, that's off the plumb line. Because if I don't have the right view of God, if I don't, if I don't have God lined up correctly in my theology and my, in my personality and my ethics and my morals, I'm, 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 I'm condemned to be wrong. And I can't help it because I'm I'm going to line up one way or the other. But if we don't if we don't get a right view of who God is from the Word of God, we end up with humanism, and that's a lot of what we see today. Humanism, humanistic. Uh, it's all about hey, you're only going to live once. Be happy, be pleasure, and, and we fail to realize my purpose here ain't for me. It's it's to please God. It's it's like raising chickens. Those chickens ain't being raised just for their glory. They're raised. For, to, to, to satisfy their owner. But that sounds like heresy to some people, but that's that's the absolute reality of what scripture takes us that you don't run nothing. God's in charge. So, hey Amen. Any other that, comments? That we get that from the Bible. Now the Bible don't ever sound worthless. No, he said we made an image of God. I'm somebody, but I don't run nothing. If 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 I belong to God in his kingdom. I'm sorry, I'm jumping out. I, I just wanted to throw those thoughts in there. That's good, Reverend Washington. No, no, we appreciate so it. Any, any other comments? Pastor Washington, you're right, you're right on the money. We have to understand in Scripture that we can't take a Scripture and pull it out just to satisfy our, our appetite because the Bible is not designed for that. It's designed to make us better to understand who Jesus is and what God is saying in his conversation because the Bible is a conversation in his conversations to us. When we read the Bible, looking for things to directly apply to your or our situations, it leads to a shallow, narrow reading of the scripture. A shallow, narrow level reading of the scripture. You, you, you surface reading now you you're not really studying the bible you're looking for something that will fit my my appetite right now because i'm going through something i need to i need this let me let me look oh the lord is my shepherd i shall not want right and, and that's not even uh, 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 applicable what you're going through right so the bible is not meant to be read like a support manuscript or a self-help book it's that's not it's not a dr phil uh uh bestseller it is god's word designed to help us live better it is not read a scripture today it keeps satan away it keeps the devil away no you should read scripture every day but you, you should read for discernment allowing uh, asking the holy spirit to come into your life so you could apply it properly it is our means of knowing God, how God chooses to expose himself to us. But to know him as he chooses to reveal himself, we have to dig into the difficult books and passages that don't make us feel good. Or we can post on Facebook. Now, how many of us, and I know you probably won't tell us, but how many of us uh, post on Facebook? And when we post on Facebook, we posting a scripture for the day. Like, I, I know it happens. You don't have to tell me it happens, but I, I know it happens. But do you ever find 
uh, scripture dealing with revelation on Facebook much because it's difficult to understand. You're not willing to. We're not, we're not willing to dig deep into the scripture to find what it what it, what it really means. We're afraid, I think, of revelation because we don't understand it. And we don't understand it because we don't rely on the Holy Spirit. We have to be biblically sound in our doctrine and you can't do that without prayer and supplication. You can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You've got to spend time in the Word. Mm -hmm. We have to read books like Revelation and Genesis and, and Habakkuk and Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy and others because it's going to help us to get spiritually fit and biblically sound. Amen. We are drawn to books like Psalm and the New Testament epistles because they seem every day inapplicable, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can relate to, to Peter and you can relate to Psalm. They tell you it's a prayer book. It's a, it's a song book. And we all like to sing. And it sounds good when, when somebody reads it, right? How the psalm sounds, it sounds really, really, really well. So we can relate to that. And while these books are just as inspired as the others, reading them alone gives us an incomplete understanding of the Bible and of God. When we take time to read the Old Testament, we get a better understanding of what's going on in David's life, when he wrote the song, we get a clear perspective on why Jesus came to earth. And we understand the visualizations and the background Paul is referring to in his letters to the early church. So we can't just stop at reading the New Testament, brothers. We've got to spend time in the Old Testament so we can get a clear understanding of what God is speaking to us. God is talking to us in the Bible. And we ought to read it every day, but we just can't call words. We're not reading it just for memorization. That's a problem. We got to read it for interpretation. We got to read it for living. And until we do that, brothers, we're going to always be afraid of those difficult books. Any comments? Okay. So I, let me, I, let me... Brother Robinson, again, if, if, if God gave me this, and gentlemen, if he gave us this to get to know him, we stop short of, of saying, I don't want to know everything about you. I don't really want to know everything about you. And that's what you're posing to us, that I, I, I got enough. I, I got enough. I, I don't. I don't need much more than that. And and that means I've got a limited view of God. If 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 I'm not curious enough to know as much of Him that He wants to reveal to me, and that ain't all that He is. But many times we settle for less. And I and and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that as clergy. So I, I and I know the bar is higher for us, and I know we settle for less. Let me ask a question to the brothers on this line. Is it possible that we fear reading the Bible because of various reasons? Somebody, let's talk about that. What is your fear of reading God's word? You think somebody's going to ask you a question to explain it? You think you're going to find something out that you really don't want to know? What is the real issue with reading God's word? I believe a lot of times it's fear because I don't know as much as Pastor Washington. I can't teach like Brother Scott, or, or I, I can't I can't teach like Brother Simmons or or Bryce Hunter, or, or I can't I can't expound on the word that somebody brings. What is it? Come on, talk to me now, brothers. I'm gonna call uh, your name, uh, Brother Robson. Yes. Brother Robson. Mm -hmm. uh, everything you say and Reverend Washington saying is true, and some of the books are real hard, and like you say, you'd be scared, but I'm going to ask you and Rem Washington, what are some other books you can read to help you with these books in the Bible? There, there's other material that we can read to help us with that, with the, the you know, the 
the scriptures in the Bible. Because you can read the scripture and don't understand it, but they have other mm -hmm. books that you can read, you know, yes. such as yes. commentaries. Yeah. To you help you. You, you. you answered your own question. You answered your right. own question. Yeah. Brothers, you, you, your brother Simmons is, is on the money. You you get the Bible because none of us understand the Bible like like we want to. We certainly don't understand like Pastor Watson or Pastor Anderson. They don't understand it at all. They don't understand it at all. But the by Pastor Anderson and Washington both have said this: the best commentator on the Bible is the Bible itself. There are references all over the Bible to make us understand how to not misuse and misinterpret the Bible. Right. So right. you get you some you 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 invest in your studies. Mm -hmm. of the word as much as you invest in your suit. Wow. You invest right. in your studies of the of the Bible as much as you invest in Valentine's Day. Wow. Because it is in? more important no, I, than I those things. Oops, sorry, brother. Go ahead, brother. No, Go I ahead. apologize. I, I think sometimes most things are intimidating until we experience them. And, and I think many times, and I, I hate to be old school here, I hate to condemn old school. I mean, it's hard to appreciate scripture when you're reading it in the King James Version. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to get the understanding a mm -hmm. lot of times. Now, some of it, we've caught it, as they say, more so than taught it, because we've heard it for so long. Right. But get a new translation. That, that's what mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't get a commentary, because yeah. commentary, well, I mean, it, it, if you want to understand it, I think finally, obviously, commentary is, is interacting with it but if i just want to read i want to know god I, I think the first thing about the bible is the function of it is to introduce us to god but after function it needs to be fellowship just spending time with god in the bible and and, and he can't get us to stay there because it ain't no sugar in it <laughs> well, it's hard to find sugar in the king james a lot of times you need a a better translation so you can hear them kind of saying it in english to you and yeah you realize that, mm -hmm. that that there are some 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 authorized text that are not King James that'll just help you understand the story. The, the, many of you are acquainted with Brother Robinson, I'm gonna let it go, is the Living Bible. No serious Sunday school teacher comes to class with the Living Bible. But if you wanna know the story, why don't you just read the Living Bible? Mm -hmm. Because it helps me at least get an understanding of what happened. But the more we spend time with scripture, the more the story can come alive for us. And then you get into your technical tools like a commentary and those type of things where I want to mine scripture and, and get stuff heavier out of than what's laying on the surface there. But that's mm -hmm. that's background and all that. But 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 I, I let me let me shut up. I'm sorry, Brother Roberts. Go right here. No, no, man. I mean, this, this, this is Brother Smith. So I mean, I've always been taught and and, and it's true. I've been going to Sunday school. And mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, I'm staying in Sunday school and I'm going through it. We're coming through the yeah. book of Israel once more again. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hit mm -hmm. every scripture. You continue to go to Sunday school. Go to Sunday yeah. school. You're going you're gonna to go through the Bible. Yeah. You're going to yeah. be like, man, I yeah. mean, this, we, just, we just got through finishing about Israel. We just got through talking about David. We just got through talking. So go to Sunday school class. Mm -hmm. uh, going through uh, Blue Letter Bible, that's that's a good information. Yeah. I, and I, I'm, I'm talking to seasoned brothers by getting this information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, All I'm, right. only, I'm only 44 going on 45, and I'm talking to seasoned brothers getting information of what's helping. I saw somebody say J. Vernon McGee. I love J. Vernon McGee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love listening to John Courses. You You're know? not the only one. And, right. <laughs> and, and trust me, I love going through the book of Revelation. And we went through it. Yeah, I actually bought me a book online about the book of Revelation, going through it myself to know more about it. And it, it is in code yeah, and man. to understand. But you don't hear preachers preaching about revelations that much. Nobody wants to no. hear about hell. Hell is real. Once you get to that book of Revelation, you're going to be in tears wanting to, to, to make sure your family don't die and go to hell. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, especially the great tribulation hey, comes from. Well, I want to get started with that. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, uh, Sunday school. That's that's a, that's a good just just going to Sunday school class, Bible study. I miss those Wednesday night Bible study. I love them. But if you do that, that's going to be a very big help to you just to get started on doing that. Well, thank you so much for that, brother. Uh, the other the other thing, Pastor Washington mentioned different books. So listen, get the Good News Bible, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, you don't have to bring it to church. Study it at home. So at least mm -hmm. you will be sound in your study whenever you do have that discussion. 
Get a Bible that you understand so that when, when someone is going through something and they come to you, you don't mislead them. That's being biblically sound, brothers. You know, yeah. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Go ahead, Brother Odin. Yeah, I just no, want to see Brother oh, I, I, Scott was there first, I think. Okay, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You know, uh, Brother Robinson, I want you to remember this uh, next time we're in Sunday school and and you raise your hand and you, because I, I'm, I'm trying to crack this good Zoom etiquette here and I've had my hand up. <laughs> and, but that brother really said, so the brother who just spoke, he really said something, uh, 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 I think, uh, uh, very important. And, and, and Willis, to get to your, I, I think your original question really was dealing with uh, why we are so afraid to approach the word of God. I, I think that's what you were really asking. I think we started talking about the different translations of the Bible. But I think your, 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 your question really was, what 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 fear in us prevents us from wanting a, a, a closer walk or a more of a, rel, a revelation of God's word through the study of His word? Um, and I think the answer is uh, simply Hebrews four and twelve, and it tells us it, it basically tells us why we're so apprehensive about approaching the word of God. And I like how it's, it's put in the New International Version, and it says, "For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword; it penetrates." even to dividing soul and spirit, mm -hmm. joints and marrow. It judges, here it goes, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's really, I think, the, 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 the crux of our, our, of our issue. We don't want to be judged or, or we don't want to have to reconcile, be reconciled to the word of God based on where we are in our lives and how we are outside of the will of God. And so for many of us, uh, you know, we, we, we won't approach the word of God because we know that the word of God is going to convict us in areas of our lives where we're falling short. So, I, you know, I, I thought that's where you were going with that original question. And I just wanted to make that comment. Brother Scott, can I read, can I read the Living Bible real quick? Exactly can I read that verse from the Living Bible? This is, this is Hebrews 4 and 12, Living Bible. For, for whatever God says to us is full, full of living power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger, cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their parts, exposing mm -hmm. us for what we really are. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, can I add something? Brother Oda, Reverend Oda, then you, Brother, Brother Caleb, Brother Caleb. Yeah. yeah, real quick, I won't be long. I, I just... When I hear what we're talking about, I only question of if we are learning and as we learn, we, we still have to have a brick in one hand and a sword in the other. Because even as we're learning, we are still up against the enemy. But I look at how our churches are being decimated. If we, if we say the Bible is true 100%, then why are we allowing new pastors to come in and rip out deacon boards, say that, that we don't need deacons and, and go against what the Bible says as far as how to run a church or how to facilitate God's business. And I always have said, even as a preacher, that I have seen pastors stand in God's pulpit, but they don't have a pulpit today, now it's the stage, but the Bible tells us what the pulpit is supposed to be built of, how, how it's supposed to be built, the purpose of it, but we're not standing on, th on this word of God so we get these new preachers that are coming in and, and, and are taking away the gospel of Jesus Christ and replacing it with all of this other stuff. And I just want to say, I thank God for Reverend Anderson. I was telling the deacon today that I thank God for Reverend Anderson standing for what he believes in because Reverend uh, uh, Deacon Ware was saying that we need to be under leadership. But I thank God we can be under good leadership because so much is happening in our churches that is questionable to the word of God. So as we learn this, this, and we talk about why are we afraid? We, we are afraid because when it's time for us to fight, we got to fight. We have to stand. We used to sing, we are soldiers in the army. We got to hold up the bloodstained banner. Well, in order to hold up the bloodstained banner, we got to learn this word of God. And we cannot be afraid to stand on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the thing is, I, I'm always against the preacher pushing his book over the Bible. I hate that. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. who phone that is, but I can y'all mute your phone so we're gonna echo. 
you know, but I'm just saying that we need to just be more firm in our standing. We need to be more firm in, in what we are doing because we, we are seeing our church erode and no one's saying anything. People are going from church to church trying to find the real church because so many churches have stepped away from the doctrine, as you say, Brother Robinson. So my thought kind of got lost, but I just want to say the reason why we don't stand because we have to fight and many of us don't want to fight. We just want to go to church and look good in a suit with shiny shoes, but that's not fighting. We have to be willing to stand up against the wild and the snap of the devil. That requires us to be ready, army ready. Reverend Caleb did that, that's the question. Oh, I just wanted to be very uh, simple about it. And, and I, my grandmama used to always tell me, when you know better, then you have to do better. And I say that's the reason why, that was a personal testimony, the reason why when I began to study the Bible that I, I was fearful about studying because the more that I know, the more I'm be held accountable for. Amen. That's what I was. Thank you. I think you started out very, very accurate uh, when you raised the question of what is doctrine. And I think Robert Oden did allude to that in the end. There are different flavors of religion, always will be, because the strength of our, our, our gathering is sort of a weakness. And it's that five letter word, faith. Five letter word, faith. Everything we do, the reason why we get together on a Monday night men who have nothing to do with each other have stuff to do with each other, but it's because we have a common faith, okay? But the, the, the problem with faith is I made room in my belief system to let you believe anything you want. And I'm saying that's why we have doctrine. And that's what we're saying, biblically sound. Uh, the classical definition of, of doctrine, I believe, is faith seeking understanding. You come to God with faith. You don't come to him from a book. Uh, black people did anyway. We, we, we didn't come to God from, from a, a scholarly education. We come to him from experience. We have faith. But it's that faith that we have that's got to go fall, go backwards and get understanding. And that's why we, we need doctrine to, to box us in, to, 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 to fasten us in. That way we're not free to do everything we feel like doing because we feel like faith draws us to that. And so if we're going to be biblically sound, we've got to allow our liberated faith to become boxed in by, by biblical understanding. And then that's why at Lily Grove, we, we don't necessarily cookie cutter ourselves to anywhere else because this church, to some degree or another, is governed by faith. You see, and the Will Avenue Church, now we may have doctrinal consistencies, but they activate them differently and from church to church because they have a different faith thing. All I'm saying is doctrine still needs to be the, the girders, if you will, that help build a building. You got to have some, some, some foundational uh, 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 structure, some north and south structure. And that's what doctrine is. And you can't get that just watching grandma and grandpa. You got to go to the book and me, and to, me. to meet God for yourself to find out what a whole water and what won't hold water. Amen. Amen. Brother, brothers, if I could, but Robinson, but I would hate to go in front of Brother Anthony Hawkins because he had his hand up just as long as I did. So I would like him to go and then, then I'll, I'll, I'll come and say something. Yeah, I, I literally just wanted to say uh, last Thursday, Brother Frank Williams and I were talking about teaching our portion, KMA, you know, coming up. And we I was explaining to him that in order for me personally, I had to be able to talk to someone about the word in order for me to understand the word. So just like when I took Spanish class, in order for me to understand it and speak it and write it, I have to do it more than once. So I don't mind the King James Version because that creates conversation. It creates conversation, then I can ask questions. If I ask questions, then I have also additionally brought other individuals in to talk about it so I can understand and talk about it with other men of God. So I kind of cheat because my dad is a pastor, my brother is a reverend, my mother teaches Sunday school, you know, so I can ask other individuals. And then now we have created this family conversation about the Bible. So I don't mind that. It also gives me the ability to ask questions when I truly don't understand, because I'm not at that point in my faith. I'm faithful. But I can't go into scripture and say, hey, 
this is it. But my father also told me, Hawkins, you got to start at the beginning and you always got to read a few, few scriptures after you found what it is because you miss out. And you see, Reverend Washington, you miss out on certain things when you don't read it all. So it, for me, that's, I'm not scared. I'm trying to find out because I want to be able to be biblically strong. Case in point, some Jehovah Witnesses came to my house the other day, knocked on my door, came to my door. I opened the door and they were like, hey, well, you know, we want to talk to you about it. I said, well, look, I understand who God is. I said, you can believe what you want to believe, but I'm not going to participate in that because on Monday nights, we talk about the Bible. And then instantly, I remember Reverend, Reverend Anderson, Pastor Anderson, saying there's at some point you have to have that ammunition. So when you have a conversation, you can go, you can put it out from the Bible and have that talk with them. And I missed out on that part. I missed out being able to do that because I'm not at that point yet. So that's all I wanted to say. Amen. Uh, Amen. Brother, I have two comments. Uh, uh, brother, uh, Reverend Mark Caleb, he, he said the short answer to what I wanted to say. Sure, if you, you know better, then you, it means you need to do better. But brother, I, I like to give you a, a real life experience that, that helped me when it comes to, and I'm going to back to what brother uh, Simmons said about books to helping you understand. Because I grew up all Baptist, just like many of you. King James is king, that, as you read King James. But when, 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 uh, when, I, um, when I put my, now my, my wife's ring on Lailway uh, at a jeweler and to make payments on it, you know, because I ain't have enough money at the time. So I'd put payments on it to, to, to get it out. And then they, they put it on a, on a cathedral setting and, every, and everything. And I was able to uh, ask a hand in marriage. But when I made the last payment, the jeweler gave me a gift. Now he gave me a Bible but he gave me a Bible that was a NLT, New Living Translation. But let me tell you something. The jeweler ain't look like me. He didn't really talk like me. I really didn't want to accept that Bible. I really did not want to accept it because, man, I, I go to uh, Little Grove Missionary Baptist Church. King James is king. I go to Sunday school over there. I'm very active over there. Why are you who don't look like me giving me a Bible? Brothers, I accepted that Bible, I took it, and when I finally opened it up, I was like, wow, I should have been reading something like this. So what I'm saying is, in all things, you got to get an understanding. And the way to get an understanding is at times just get a different version, and you can always refer back to the King James. And, 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 and like Brother Hawkins said, having conversations with other brothers to help you understand. But I, I just want to share that story with you. He, gave, he was giving me an understanding and a manuscript, and I almost refused it because he didn't look like me. He didn't talk like me, but it was the best, one of the best gifts I ever received. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers, for, for your interaction. <laughs> now, Jeremiah 29, 11, is, as an example, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you hope and their future. What a nice, inspiring verse, isn't it? Of course, we want to apply to our lives, uh, our plans, and our post endeavors, etc. But there's a problem with what I just said in terms of the application of that particular verse. This verse, this, this, this was written to Israel, right before they were taken into Babylonian captivity. Y'all know the story. They would spend 70 years as strangers in a foreign land, which is a consequence for their repeated disobedience. If you read the verses before Jeremiah 29, 11, you will see just how dire the situation was. And if you read Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14, you'll find something even more challenging. But we tend to get this verse to graduating seniors from college and, and perhaps from high school, or you, you talk to someone who has lost a job and, and they're having a hard time and they lost a loan, you say, and you say, well, you send them that, well, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Now you've misused that verse. You have literally misused that because it has nothing to do with prosperity. It has everything to do with disobedience. And so we have to be careful how we use God's word trying to help people. You wouldn't dare want to give that to your daughter after graduation saying, you're going to go through something. You know, God's going to get put you in captivity. That's what's going to happen. You won't do that. So we have to be careful how we hear that. This, this is what it says. Then you will call on me and pray to me. And I will listen to you. Verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Verse 14, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. Now that doesn't sound like a scripture that you would want to give to a graduating senior or someone who's lost a job. Because that's not going to make him feel good, is it? I, I, I you know, he, he's got plans for your life. Yes, he does. But was it, was that the scripture you really wanted to give them? Now, you didn't mean no harm in giving them that scripture. You really didn't. You really intended to, to encourage them, right? I mean, come on, we've all been guilty of doing something like that, haven't we? I mean, but most of us, not, not, not all of us, you know, some of us are really, really deep into it and we know exactly what we're doing, but not all of us are that astute in the word. And because we have surface read the scripture, we tend to use it for someone's benefit. And it really could be their detriment if they really read the whole scripture. God had a plan for Israel. That's true. But God's original perfect plan their obedience in the promised land was disallowed because of their disobedience, y'all. If they obeyed him, they would have received the glorious blessings of peace because their disobedience to God made God change his mind about what was there for them. God altered his plan to include captivity to Israel Because they had to learn there were consequences for them rejecting God. This whole passage is about Israel removing themselves from God's plan and God's grace in spite of it. That's the goodness of God, y'all. The grace of God. Now, God could have killed them all. But he did have a plan for them. Brother Robinson, what would cause somebody to misinterpret that? Surface reading. Well, well brother, reading the whole scripture. Well, uh, well listen, you, you, that was a question that you asked is why does people afraid to read the Bible? And one of the reasons I found, and this is my application, is that I really didn't know how to read the Bible, how to study it. It wasn't until I went to a class called Bible Study Method that they showed me how to study the Bible and understand the Bible. And if when, when you understand how to read and study the Bible, then you become a student of the Bible. It becomes a joy to you then. And what you did right then, you showed us how to put everything into context, how to put that scripture into context to get true, to get the right meaning of it. A lot of people don't understand that. So I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't read the Bible because they it's not fun to them. It's not an enjoyment because they really haven't been taught to how to understand how to study the Bible and read the Bible. I think when I when when I got taught how to study the Bible and read the Bible, that was one of the greatest gifts I think I could ever have, and that's why it becomes a joy now because somebody taught me, and I think that's one of the things. And this is kind of kind of going off key, but I think that's one of the things I think we will benefit all our members is to show them how to study the Bible. I think that would be a great blessing to give them a chance to understand how to study the Bible. And not to go too far, but, but Brother Robson or either Reverend Washington, we're talking about how biblically sound. We, one of the missions of this mission, of this uh, ministry, is to encourage guys to become biblically sound. 
What does it mean to become biblically sound? How do I become biblically sound? Can, if I'm not throwing you off, can you help me with that? Well, I, I would argue this, to say that something's sound, it means it's been tested. It means it's been evaluated in some context or the other. And I think at the end of the day, uh, biblically sound just means, doesn't mean you have to have a degree in seminary. It just means that you're careful and you recognize the use of scripture in a healthy way. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, a Ouija board. I need the numbers for the lottery tonight. <laughs> well, they're in there, all right, but that's not God's purpose for give, giving it to us. That's not what it's for. And I think many people misuse things when they're afraid of it because they don't understand it or they've never used it. And I think the more you use the Bible, and the more you sit under strong teaching, like we brag about all the time, you won't mishandle scripture. I mean, that doesn't mean you know it from Genesis to Exodus. It just, I mean, Genesis to uh, Revelation. It just means that I won't be careless with it. And, and I think, uh, and forgive me if I ever go there, because I don't mean to go there. But Bible, the Bible is, is, is absolutely street language. Most of it is just street language. It's not excellent Greek like, Luke and, and like Hebrew, everything in the Bible is virtually street language, it, it, which says to me, it, 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 in my understanding, God ain't trying to fool me. And, and, and so we take it and we maneuver it and we manage it and we, we elongate it. And before you know it, it's so complicated. Who wants to study it? Can, can I say something, yeah. Reverend? Um, I'm sorry, were you finished? You will go right here with. Okay, well, I think when when we have just kind of encourage, if I can, you have a desire to learn more about God. The best thing to do is to ask God. Go in God. Go to God in prayer and ask God to help us. We need to ask God to help us understand the Bible, yeah. understand His Word, and apply it to our everyday life, which is a challenge. But I encourage. The people who like the King James Version, there's a thing called the New King James Version. And they take the old English reading out of it, like the Thou Art and Wilt and all that. So the New King James Version is good. And my second thing would be get a study Bible. A study Bible really, really, really helps understand, especially the Old Testament books. And then like everything else, you know, if you get into a, a industry for the first time, if you go in and taking a foreign language, like Brother Hawkins was saying, you got to go and you got to put an extra effort into it. Uh, you got to go get you a, a Bible encyclopedia, get you a, a Bible handbook, uh, get you a customs and map, get things that will help you understand about the Old Testament. And then I would say after that, just try to study the books for what they are, you know, study the, the minor prophets and know who they were speaking to, why they were speaking to who they were speaking to mm -hmm. and, and, you know, read the gospels and stuff. So, you know, just, I wouldn't try to do it all at once. I think that's the biggest fear of people reading the Bible is where do I start? And yeah. I ain't going to be able to do this all at once. So they take one book, and they get discouraged and then they close it. So my best recommendation is get you a study Bible, get you a Bible dictionary and a Bible encyclopedia. So, so, them thing so here, cost, them things cost money, man. Yeah, they and do. Bible dictionary. Hey, yeah, they and, do and, and so, <laughs> and so does, money, man. Hey, and yeah, so do. does, and so does rims on cars and, <laughs> and, and fancy alarm systems and <laughs> new so, furniture. So, so, so Will, you right. So, so it's amazing how we think about this thing, and we're talking about how 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 to learn more about the Bible. And we always, if you ever think about a criminal, and we say he's been in prison all that time, now he's a scholar on the Bible. You know why? Because he's taking the time. He's got time yeah. Yeah. to study the Bible. Yeah, we have yeah. to start making time to study yeah. whatever Bible that is. But if you're not go. making time for that Bible, you're not gonna learn it. Period. 
Yeah, you have to find right. somewhere in your life to make time to study Amen. that Bible, whatever that Bible is. <laughs> King James, you, Old Lord. James, whatever it is, you have to find time so that you can learn more about God. And then what happens Amen. is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fills yes. you. So I want to know more about it because I have time to study the Bible. You ain't making time, Amen. you ain't gonna learn it. You ain't gonna learn it. Y'all got Amen. me excited now. It's true. Uh, it, I love what yeah. Brother Washington said. Brother Washington said. And you're right, Gilmore. If we don't take time and have the desire to uh -huh. know God, we ain't gonna set aside no time to know Him. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I learned when I first came to uh, to Christ was the only way I'm gonna know God if I follow what He said in His Word. And I look at Joshua when he first came, when he first took the hand over Israel. God told him, "This book of the law shall stay in your mouth." That's right. And you shall meditate on it. Day and, Day and night. Uh -huh. So if we, if, if I love what brother, what brother Robinson said, if we don't learn the context and the context of that scripture, we're not going to go up there. We're going to quote it wrong. We're going to quote it at the wrong time to the wrong people due to the fact because we don't know. And if we do, like Brother Will suggested, get other translations and study them. I, on my desk, I have four different translations. And studying the Sunday school lesson, I looked at all of them, all those translation to get a better understanding to what God want me to say to his people, not okay. what I want to say. Mm -hmm. What God wants to say. In order to understand the context of it, I learned in Bible in uh, Bible college, uh, they told me to get in the word, ask God for the wisdom to understand his word, and meditate on that word constantly. Mm -hmm. In order for me to do that, I had to be able and willing to stay in this word as much as I possibly can. So like you said, if you spend money on those wheels, you know, <laughs> or 70 inch TVs, why not say spend that money on helping you understand what God wants you to do? Amen. Amen. If you can't, if we're willing to do that, you'd be surprised how prosperous, because in that same verse he told us, he said, you shall be prosperous yeah, if right. you stay in this word. Uh-huh. That's what he told Joshua. If you stay in this word, you will be prosperous. So be. we want to be prosperous in spiritual things. Uh-huh. We should, like Brother Robert said, we look at it in the wrong context. And think it's talking about material. No, it's not. Uh -huh. Everything about us as children of God is spiritual. <laughs> very Amen, very brother. Very he he very brings the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be <laughs> what? Add did. Not you got to break your neck to get it. Add <laughs> but you got to seek his kingdom first. Uh, Y'all got him started. Y'all got him started. Amen. Listen, brother, where well, to answer your question simply uh, to how to become biblically sound, uh, stop going through the motion. Stop going through the motion. Spend some time. Invest. All the brothers have said it already. Invest. Anything worth having is worth working for. And if you start going through the motion trying to make us think you all of that, and you spend time with the with, with the with the word and let the Holy Spirit dwell in you, then you'll be able to do it. You know, and we none of us are where we ought to be. No, no, none of us are where we want to be. But trust God. And he'll get us there. And five and the fifth and final point I want to make tonight, and I'm, I'm almost in Doke's time now, missing out on the full meaning of God's word. Ultimately, misquoting, misusing, and misapplying scripture causes us to miss out on the full sense of God's word. While none of us, we have we have not we not we not have the perfect understanding of God's word. Uh, on this side of heaven. We will never have the perfect understanding of God's word on this side of heaven. We just won't. We, we, every day, we work harder and harder to get better and better, to get more sound in the word. We should be continuous in our studies. And as we diligently seek the Lord through scripture, he grants us his Holy Spirit, brothers, to understand what we read. Remember the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is going to be the one to help us understand what we read. We have to ask the Spirit to come into our lives. The Spirit teaches us how and when to apply those thoughts. You know, I said last week, sometimes we are in the midst of doing things, right? And then you'll have this, 
this voice in your ear telling you to go this way or or don't do this or do that. The Holy Spirit is in your ear telling us how and when to apply the thoughts or the scripture. Now, that may be someone struggling with the utilization of the Holy Spirit and his work. The Holy Spirit speaks to the hearts and minds of people to show them that they are sinners and need God's righteousness and that there will be a day of judgment. Once we are saved, the Holy Spirit takes residence in our hearts, sealing us from the with the assurance of God's soul eternal state. Let me say that again. Once we are saved, the Holy Spirit takes residence in our hearts and our minds, sealing us with the assurance of our soul's eternal state. In other words, you can read all you want, all night long, all day tomorrow, but if you're doing the reading and you're not seeking God's Holy Spirit to help you understand, your work is what? In vain. Yeah. It is in vain. You cannot do it alone. Because it's not designed for you to do it alone. Brothers, we must do more than pick up a brief statement and put it on our mugs or our tattoos. We must seek to grasp the fullness of God's story in humanity. And when we do, we will find a God far greater, far grander, far sweeter and better than we have ever imagined. Thank you for your time, brothers. Let's say amen for this, this work of, of the word of God, Brother Willis Robson. Thank you so much, Brother Willis Robson. I think we got good participation. I think we got good feedback from there. A lot of people got involved in that discussion, and I think we were blessed and benefited from your labor. Thank you again, Brother Willis Robson. I see Thank Brother you. Leonard Harris on the call on tonight. Brother Leonard, Har Leonard Harris is my deacon, and Brother Harris, I want, I want to let you know that I'm under your leadership, Brother Harris. I'm not running around without a deacon. I'm under your leadership, my brother. Thank you so much for showing up. Brother Harold Adams is here again, and Brother Wendell Hobley He's on the call with us tonight. We're glad to see you, brother. God bless you, brother. Um, I think uh, I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Washington. Reverend Washington, do you have any announcements or anything that we need to be briefed on? Uh, brother Ware and uh, gentlemen, I know we had a good night tonight. Good to see so many of you. Uh, brother Rick Visor has been very instrumental in trying to coordinate some activities for us. So we want you to keep in mind that what we will do in the month of March, we're crossing over tomorrow. And Milton Simmons, I think, I think Milton Simmons is 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 gaining a year tomorrow. I think if I'm correct, but uh, tomorrow starting the month of March, uh, in on the 21st, that's two Mondays, third the third Monday in March. There's a Rockets game, and I think he's got several more tickets. So if you're interested in going to that. Uh, please, uh, uh, again, send me an email or send Brother Visor an email to let him know that you are interested in going to that fellowship. That's a 6.30 p.m. game, uh, the Rockets versus the Washington Wizards. And uh, uh, so that's that's something that's coming up in the month of March. And then our church anniversary is coming up in the month of March as well. So let's stay tuned for that as well. Uh, there are a couple of youth efforts that I think Brother Visor made mention of. We want you to participate in those. And we're getting ever closer, gentlemen, to the book. We're getting ever closer to our focus book, and that's going to be Kingdom Men Rising. I only have about one or two more uh, workbooks, but if, any, if you have not already secured your own, uh, we got one or two here, but please get your book, a workbook. We want to get started, and we're going to advertise this late in the month of uh, March, but the first Monday in April, all roads on Monday night, all kingdom men, please be present. We got a very special guest who will be with us on the first Monday in April. Is that right, Deacon Robinson? Yes, sir, you're absolutely right. First, first Monday in April, we have an extra special guest. So we'll tell you more about that 
as we go forward. So again, thank you again for the elements that were presented tonight, Deacon Robinson and Brother Ware. I think that's about all I want to say. And fourth Sunday, we saw several of y'all with your pens on, but we we gotta we gotta make a grand of presentation so folks can say why why I don't have a pen on. So uh, fourth Sundays, the kingdom men, we wear our pens on fourth Sundays. If don't if you don't wear them any other time, we wear them on fourth Sundays of the month. So we want to look forward to that in the month of March as well. Yes, sir. Thank you, Reverend Washington. And, and I'm planning on going to that uh, Rockets game on March the 21st. And I want to sit between Willis Robinson and Irvin Johnson and Rick Vizer. That's who I want to sit between, man, because if the Rockets <laughs> ain't winning, man, if they losing in the game before, I know I'm going to get some entertainment from them two brothers right there. I'm telling you. Why the bleachers, huh? Why the bleachers? <laughs> Reverend, uh, Reverend Washington, this is uh, Brother Mike Johnson. Uh, I just wanted to know if you received my email. I think I sent it to you about a week ago regarding tickets to that very yes, game. Yes, I, I did forward you on the list. Yes, sir. You got the extra two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. And Mike, Thank I you. got your plaque when I see you on Sunday. Come by and get it. God bless. I sure will. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Johnson, I see your hand up. Yeah, I would, I'd like to... Uh, just make an announcement. Don't have a specific date right now, but uh, I had uh, suggested to some of the brothers that we have one of our brothers who have been with Brotherhood for many years, uh, Ken Johnson. Uh, I don't know if you guys know him, but anyway, he's a, a seasoned brother and he's in need of some repair around his house. So uh, I would like for us to get together and maybe go over one Saturday and do a couple of hours just kind of helping him. Right now he's having a problem with a with a uh, I think a possum in his house in the in the attic. So uh brother Odin, I got your cage and I'm going over there tomorrow. But anyway, I'd like for us to maybe set up a date and go over there one Saturday morning and get his house in repair. Uh but we'll we'll set a date that everybody may be comfortable with everybody, but it'll be a Saturday. But if they, what do a person need to do if they want to volunteer with that effort, Brother Johnson? What do they need to do? Uh, if you can, I, you can either contact me or Reverend Washington. I don't want to put too much on Reverend Washington. Those of you who may want to uh, participate. Now, I'm not going to, I don't expect you to go over there and build a house. Uh, but we want to go over there and maybe cut down some bushes and things and, uh, you know, just kind of do as much as we can within a couple of hours. I think that's a good effort, Brother Johnson. We've done the we've done the classroom portion of our Kingdom in Academy. We've done the fellowship portion of our Kingdom in Academy. Now it's time to do some service in our Kingdom in Academy. So we definitely want to be participating in all phases of what the Kingdom in Academy is doing. Thank you, Brother Johnson. Uh, brother Brother Willis, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Uh, any new people that's on the call, we definitely want to uh, acknowledge you. So if this is your first or either your second time on the call, we want to hear from you. Tell us who you are. How did you hear about this place? And uh, what are your experiences? Tell us some of the things you experienced. And Brother Robinson, we're putting it in your hand. All right, thank you. Any new people? Any first time? Uh, this, is, this is my second time coming. Um, uh, uh, my name is Earl Vincent. Um, Mr. Darren O'Neill is my supervisor. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know you guys joked about it the last time, but uh, now this is something that I wanted to attend. So I really enjoyed it the last time. And I enjoyed it this time, too. So uh, I will be on whenever you guys are having uh, this men's meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you guys so much. Excellent. Yeah. We're glad to have you, brother. Yeah. We're glad to have you. Smith here. Um, about my third time or fourth time, um, uh, Spencer Randall um, told me about it and uh, Todd uh, Harrison um, from my work had told me about it. So I really appreciate it. Thank Amen. you, man. Thanks for dropping in, sir. We're gonna ask brother Frank Brown to lead us in the first prayer and brother Edward Nellums to lead us in the second prayer. And brother Reverend Washington, we've had some brothers pinned up the last two weeks, haven't we? Yeah. Are any of them on the line that you know of? Well, let's see. I don't. 
Well, let's ask them. They're of age. Let them speak for themselves. Who's been peeing here lately? Who, 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 who wants to volunteer and do the kingdom men oath? Apostle, who did you pin? Brother Brown, brother who's doing the prayer, uh, <laughs> Donnell Henderson, yeah. and brothers Nell. I, I, oath? Okay, well, 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 I'm gonna have to volunteer. So, who want to volunteer? Because I'll volunteer you. Some, you I, I'll I'll, you the, brother Robinson. Who is this, brother? Brother Simmons. Henderson. Brother, That's Henderson. brother Henderson. Okay, let's go with it then, brother Brown. If you would lead us in the first prayer, and brother Nellums the second prayer. Where's Nellums? Is he a visitor? Nellums. Has he gone? Has he left us? I don't. I don't see him anymore. Brother, Brother Robinson? Yes, sir. Before we pray, uh, just a reminder of Brother Visor had, uh, spoke of earlier. I've been uh, asked to, uh, he stopped me to assist him regarding this handing out of homeless items. I just want to give the brothers a reminder. I believe a couple of months ago, we walked in the community and there wasn't any fear. There was no hesitation. We were just walking around. You know, we just prayed on every corner. That was an awesome experience. I believe uh, it was the same week, unless I'm mistaken, that there was a community gun give back. At the uh, at the window Neal uh, Center, but I want to bring up the point that a good deed is its own reward. We don't have to. Uh, no one, on, I'm sure, nobody on this line wants to be seen what they're doing. But brother, this is this is this is right in the wheelhouse of what brother Ware was saying. I'm going to message you. I'm going to chat my put my number in here. You can text me, or you can text uh, brother Visor if you would like to contribute. I didn't hear from anyone. I just want to give a reminder. We would like to go to the community. I've I've done this before in terms of walking up to a homeless person and I've left in tears before. It's just a priceless thing to put something in someone's hand who may think they don't have anything. So brothers, I'm going to put my number on there and Brother Visor's number is already in an earlier message. Yeah, if you would like right. to uh, if you would like to uh, participate with us this week. Thank you, man. All right. Okay. Well, brother Reverend uh, Reverend James Johnson, would you offer our second prayer? Since brother Nellum is not Nellum is Nellum is not here. Yeah, sure. Sure will. All right. Brother Frank Brown, if you would proceed, please. Yes, sir. Father God, we, we thank you for tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that we've heard and all that we've experienced on the night and studying your word, Lord God. Lord God, continue to bless us, Lord God, as we grow as grow in, as brothers, Lord God. Allow your Holy Spirit to fill us and lead us and guide us, Lord God. Father God, we just come asking that you would have mercy on us and forgive us of our sins, Father God. Lord God, as we continue to fellowship as brethren, Lord God, to, to become spiritually and physically, Lord God, fit to, to uh, Lord God, to carry out your, your mission and your will in our lives, Father God. We pray that each brother on this line will be blessed tonight, Lord God, that you would watch over and keep, uh, bless them and their families. Lord God, praying for the brethren that, that desire to be here on tonight, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, that we can, Lord God, continue to study your words, Lord God, to show ourselves approved, a workman that needed not be ashamed, but right in the word of truth, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray that you would continue to bless this week. Bless our pastor, bless Reverend Washington and the leaders of, of the Kingdom Men Academy, Father God. Lord God, we just pray right now, sharp, iron sharpens iron, Father God, that mm -hmm. Lord God, we would reach out and, and, and be a light into this dark world, Father God. Lord God, we just pray for our world. We pray for the country. We pray for this nation. And we pray, Lord God, for every lost soul, Lord God, that someone will uh, somewhere and somehow meet them at where they are. And Lord God, help turn their lives around to come to you, Lord God. Father God, we just thank you again. Bless our week. Lord God, bless everything that uh, everyone we come in contact with, Lord God, in our concentric circles, Father God, that we would, Lord God, just bless them, and that you would use us to be a blessing in their lives, Father God. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died for us, Lord God, that we may have life and have it more abundantly, Lord God, and to God be the glory tonight, and we give you all the praise and the glory and honor that, we so, that you so deserve. In Jesus' name, amen, and praise God. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again thanking you, Lord, for this night. Thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard. And then, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to continue to uh, expound, help us to learn to expound on your word. Take this yoke and learn of you, for your yoke is easy and your burdens is light. We thank you, Lord, tonight for our teachers. We thank you, Lord, for the input that's been said. But then, Lord, we just want to just not be just hearers of your word, but do us also. 
Lord, carry us where we can't go. Take us, lead us where we need to go. Bless us, Lord, that we may be a blessing to someone else mm -hmm. and that we be so reminded of who you are and what you represent. Strengthen our lives, strengthen each one of us as a kingdom man, that we can be the best kingdom man that you want us to be. Take Thank self you. out of the way. And then, Lord, uh, give us what we need in this time that we're living in right now. And, Lord, we continue to give you the praise and the honor. Bless the leadership of our church, uh, our pastor and associate pastor, and all the leaders that want to expound and be who they need to be in, in the window of God. We thank you. We love you. Keep us, hold us, sustain us in Jesus' strong and precious name. Amen. Amen. As a kingdom man, I stand to acknowledge. Man, I stand to acknowledge. To acknowledge my position in Christ. My position in Christ. 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 Place in my home. My place my in my home. Potential for service in my church. My potential for service in my church. And my purpose in the world. And my purpose in the world. As a kingdom man, I stand to acknowledge. As a king, man, man, I stand, I stand to acknowledge. My position is in Christ. My, Christ. Christ. my, my home. My place in my home. Potential for service. My potential for service in my church. My church. And my purpose in the world. My purpose in the world. Purpose in the world. Purpose in the world. Amen. 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 Brother Atchison, Brother Atchison, are you still on? Yes, yes, sir. Are you are you new? I He's never around. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brother Atchison. Thank you for joining with us. I never yes. never met you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Atchison. Thank you, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Very good. Now, Brother James Johnson. Yes, sir. <laughs> You a member here at the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church? Well, every now and then. 